Hey everyone, I'm finally ready to give you my final thoughts in this review of the Craig 720 Pro Pocket Hole Jig. I have been using this for a couple of months now, and I wanted to make sure I got a few projects under my belt before sharing my final thoughts. So I have already done an unboxing and first impressions video that I'll link above, where I go through all the accessories that come with the jig and some of my initial thoughts on it. And uh, then I've also done another video, again, I'll link that above, uh, and in the description below where I compare this to the Craig K5, which I've been using for the last five years. And, and the Craig K5 was an awesome jig and one that, that has excellent build quality and something that I'd highly recommend. But um, in this video, I'm gonna focus more on a few of the use cases that I have with the cabinetry that I do and where I use pocket holes and how this jig has helped make that a little easier. I'll be talking anecdotally through some of the accessories Although again, refer to those other videos in the description and, and link before uh, for a little more detail on, on those. Um, so yeah, we, we've got all sorts of uh, project stuff in front of us. We've got some plywood that's already cut and ready to go for the lowers of a cabinet I'm building. Got some spacers, got the jig, got the accessories, got the drill, got the dust collection. So let's get to it and I'll walk you through my process. All right, so before we get to drilling the actual pocket holes, I just wanna briefly show you the project that I'm working on. So here we have a pretty simple step back cupboard with the lower cabinet with a couple doors and drawers and the upper with um, a couple shelves. And this is all gonna be face framed and just then the side view of the project as well. And I do like to always map out where I'll be using pocket holes on these sorts of projects. I incorporate pocket holes into my furniture making and cabinet making, although I always make sure that they're hidden as much as possible. And I generally do go with other types of joinery when permitted. So um, just to show you, I do have these mapped out here. So the, the base, we have them coming in from the bottom. You won't see those ones at all. From the um, kind of stretcher along here for the bottom of the drawer, they'll be going in from the top. So you won't see them from inside the opening of the cabinet. Um, we'll also have them coming down into the top piece where I'll then be putting a nice piece of walnut on top. And this is all three quarter inch plywood, then walnut top and some poplar um, face frame, which will all be painted. So it's gonna be painted white other than the walnut, which will be painted or um, finished naturally. And then the face frame, I will be using pocket holes. Although in this video right now, I'm really just gonna show some of the assembly of the base. And I won't be going into all the detail by any means. And uh, yeah, so just a little bit more detail on exactly what I'll be doing. But anyways, I do like it. So here we have the Craig 720 pocket hole jig and I do have the pro kit, but the 720 really just comes with this. And uh, I have used this to drill uh, probably a couple hundred pocket holes uh, at this point. It's held up really well. So surprisingly well, when I initially compared the build quality of this to the K5. I didn't think this was gonna hold up too well. It does seem to be a bit more fragile with the plastic. It doesn't seem to have that woven nylon in it that the K5 has. Not made in the US, so this one is made in China, whereas the K5 was made in the USA. Um, but while, while I haven't dropped it on the ground to, to really kind of test the build quality, it has held up really well. And um, I really don't have too many complaints about the build quality. It is large. So storing this is uh, a little cumbersome. It doesn't fit in any of the drawers that I built last year. So it does go to the shelf. Um, there are a few things that I really do like about this. And I actually don't think I talked about these in one of my intro videos because I didn't realize they were there. But these little extension wings that are built into it for stability makes it so that you don't necessarily need to use these covers in order to get a very stable um, jig. So I don't use these too often. I, I have a different use case for wider stock that I'll show you in a little bit. But anyways, nice to have those there. The other piece that I didn't cover too much in other videos is the onboard storage. So we do have the drill bit as well as the um, drivers and the hex wrench uh, built into there. We do have a little bit of a guide on there. So nice to have that on the jig. I mean, it's not the worst case with the 720 Pro to be able to just throw them in one of these containers. But for those that just buy the regular 720, definitely nice to have that on board storage. So again, overall, pretty happy with the build quality. The springing, the spring mechanism is good. It, it's very functional. Uh, again, I, I think We'll, we'll see how it does hold up over time. And if I run into any significant quality issues, I will let you know. 
The other piece that I really do like about this, especially compared to the K5, where it's very fragile, is the dust collection. So it has this really funky looking dust port um, or dust insert, and you just slide that in and you can hook your uh, shot vac or dust extractor up to this. And this is compatible with the Festool hose that I use, although it's very easy to get an adapter to use this with any shot vac. So pretty happy with that overall, and it can be inserted from either side. So depending on your handedness, you can do that either way. So yeah, overall the jig itself, I'm pretty happy with. Uh, let's take a look at what comes with the 720 Pro. And spoiler alert, if you were to buy this, I don't think you need to go with the Pro version. If I were to do it again, I mean, price-wise, it's not that much different, so I, maybe I would probably buy the 720 Pro again, but I would definitely recommend just getting the vanilla 720 if there's a significant price increase or difference. Um, it does come with these extension wings, and just to show you, it does have these little plastic pieces that can go underneath, and then you can actually clamp these or latch those on with these hinges and then fold them up for storage. I have never used these. I don't like having these attached. Um, just to show you use case in just a second. So if I am doing a wider board, I'll just position these just loosely along the side and it's totally fine. It's supporting the piece. It doesn't need to be connected with these horrible plastic hinges that, um, yeah, a little disappointed with that. But yeah, anyways, pretty, um, like th these can be handy to have as far as stability on the side when working with larger pieces, but there's no need to hinge them on. So that's an accessory that, that I don't use too much. And it does seem to have these little measurements on there. I don't, and I have a few friends that have this and I've asked them about these and like, yeah, never use those. Um, I do wish that these were cut out. So I wish that these were easily stackable just for storage, but because of this ridge on the top, they don't stack easily. Even this one does have a bit of a cutout, but it doesn't fit that at all. Which is, yeah, it just would have been nice when it comes to storing these in a drawer. Sorry for the noise on the video there. Then we have a couple of other accessories. I'm not gonna go through these too much spare little wheel and it does have this clamp and um in an initial video i mentioned that oh this is a little cumbersome blah 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 and craig is known for their quick clamps and their quick clamps are great so there's a lot of conversation about like well why didn't they use that here and i think the reality was just this the space and this clamp does work pretty well it's a little cumbersome to use but you can simply put that in there and then clamp this to your workbench. I don't use this. Um, I don't know, I think it's probably my use case, which I'll, I'll go through a little more when, when we get to drilling some of the holes. But for me, I am generally using or putting stretchers in just the nature of this jig and how, and this is one of the, my favorite parts about how it can rotate 90 degrees. I really have no need to um, put something that's so unstable that you really need this in there. So yeah, again, after, after a couple hundred pocket holes um, drilled with this, I have felt no need for this. Even with my K5, I never clamped it down. So yeah, anyways, nice to have. It's, it's pretty decent quality. I mean, it, it's not one of the quick clamps and this is very annoying, especially if you have a small table or if you're trying to screw this up in order to get into one of these storage containers. So. Yeah, anyways, that's kind of it as far as an overview. Again, check out my other videos for a little more detail in that. And now we're gonna get to a few of the holes. So I'll be doing a couple of the stretchers and uh, then one of the big pieces. I won't be showing you all the holes. I'll just show you a couple from each. And uh, then once we get some assembly together, I'll give you my final thoughts. So before I get to the setup of the jig, I actually did just wanna highlight this other accessory in here that I kind of glossed over. So it's a stop. And so these pieces just simply go together like that. You can put this little dial on top and it just goes along here so that you can basically do repeatable cuts. And again, this is where you probably want to actually have this latched on. Um, but the gist is that you could, again, put that top on here, move it over, set it. So then when you put in your workpiece, 
you're always getting repeatable positions for those pocket holes. I've never had to worry about the precision of pocket holes when it comes to any sort of lateral movement. So this to me is something that I will not be using. So it just basically takes up space in here. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, and I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted that because I know I glossed over it earlier. Uh, but now we want to get to the setup of the jig. And luckily the thickness of the material will automatically dictate the clamp on board, but we still have to set our drill bit depth. And luckily this is easy to do. So first of all, the included Allen key on here is very handy. And on the bit itself, you'll note, and hopefully this shows up on video, but it has these position or these depth markers on here. So half inch, three quarter inch, one and a half inch. And then on the collet, it's got this little window. So you can basically just put this exactly where you want. So for me, I'm working with material, it's almost three quarters of an inch, uh, but just shy. And I think that's something that we've come to deal with a lot in Canada. Uh, so I'm just gonna position this just a little bit um, between towards the half inch side of three quarters of an inch. Although I have often just used three quarters of an inch as a setting and it's been totally fine. It doesn't go through. Um, so let's just set this. Nice to have it on the bit. Although it's not, it was not too difficult with the K5 to basically slide it through the slot and then put the collet down and um, tighten that up. So anyways, we got that. So we can get this in. There. Okay, and now really all that we have to do is get dust collection set up. So let's turn this around. And what I'll do is it is a tight fit with the 27 millimeter hose from Festool, but this does go in here. Okay, and then can slide that in and we're essentially ready to go. So we could put out the stability arms if we want not really going to because I am only going to be doing the stretcher pieces in this orientation. So I'll basically be putting this in here. And the great thing is, is that again, this clamp just automatically goes to exactly where it needs to go. So put the piece where you want, clamp down, and you don't have to do any adjustment. You can dial in the tension a little bit if you want, but um, yeah, I've got it dialed in already. So now I'm going to drill the holes in this piece. Then I'll show you a uh, different one. Okay, so let's turn on. Just gonna be doing two pocket holes in this. This piece is four and a quarter inches. So Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to show you these pocket holes. Very clean, again, pretty much on par. Well, almost exactly to what I was getting with the K5. If anything, they're a little cleaner just because it's a, a bit of a newer drill bit. Um, so yeah, very good results. Very easy to use in this vertical orientation. I would say that other than a uh, less fragile dust collection and the automatic depth setting of this, it's pretty much the same as the K5. It is a little nicer having this uh, taller support versus the K5, which was a bit lower. So yeah, pretty happy with it with this. Although if you already have the, the K4 or the K5, I wouldn't say go out and buy this jig if this is your primary use case. But now we're going to pull out a wider piece and uh, this is where the 720 really shines. Okay, so for this use case, we're gonna be using a bigger piece of plywood. This one is 19 inches by 27 inches. So by no means too big. And I've done so many of these different ones vertically. It's not too difficult to put the piece in and do this, especially with those stabilization bars. Um, so again, just to show you, we could do that. Put the piece in, even off to the side, clamp it down and it's holding well. And if we want more support, pull over one of these guys and do that and um, it, it works pretty well this way although let's pretend that this is a much bigger sheet of plywood and a lot of the cabinets that I do especially when it comes to working in closets or, or walls 
I'm sometimes dealing with eight foot pieces and this just doesn't work. So first of all, in the garage, I have to go to the floor or go out onto the, um, the driveway and it can be really cumbersome uh, doing this. So again, this piece is totally fine like this, but I'm gonna show you my general use case with boards that are typically bigger than this. And even with a board this size, I'd probably do it this other way. So let's take that off. And the real magic here is that 90 degree rotation. So being able to rotate this jig and put it in this orientation, and then what we can do some stuff out of the way is we can slide the board in like this and by sliding that board in we can then drill our pocket holes but what you'll see is that right now this is totally lopsided so that's where these do come in handy and I do use these um, fairly often when it comes to this so again that's why I would probably skew towards the 720 Pro but if your use case is other in a different way, get the K5, K4 even, or the 720. Um, but what I can do now is I can take these two and put the support where I want it. Just like that. So now I've got a completely stable piece. So I've got it supported over here, over here, and I can move this pretty much anywhere laterally over here and it's gonna be totally fine basically just move that jig up make sure it's square and then i can clamp down and let's get our dust collection so i'm just gonna move around to the other side Well, I do have to move the jig each time, which isn't ideal. I mean, there's not too much of another option. Either move the workpiece or move the jig. It's very easy to do. Again, you just want to make sure that you're completely firm up on the side. Again, turn that off. And let's take a look. Let's take this out. So we have perfect pocket holes. So pretty much, again, identical to what we had just done in regular orientation, but in this way, you can do massive sheets. Uh, so you could just work with a full four by eight sheet if you really wanted. So awesome use case. This to me is why the 720 Pro is absolutely worth it. For somebody that primarily does cabinet making when it comes to pocket holes, and most of my projects really only have a half dozen to a dozen pocket holes, so I'm not using them too heavily. Um, this is the reason why I do love this jig. I would potentially consider the 520 um, from Craig as well, which gives a little bit more portability, it does have a bit of a pistol grip, but no dust collection, which is pretty disappointing, whereas the dust collection on this is really good. This is very well suited for my use case. I can't do this with the K5, and just let me grab something. I'll show you how I used to do this. Okay, so the way I used to do these was through this little portable, um, Craig, I can't re remember what model this is, but basically you would find the position that you would want it, and then you would take your quick clamp and basically clamp it down onto the workpiece, and then drill through there. So you get no dust collection, it's difficult to position, it can slip, um, it, it was fine. Like I use this quite a bit and, um, it was great for those large sheet goods. This is so much easier. And again, for me that this was a huge game changer. This is why for a long period of time and in Canada, they didn't seem to really ever sell here, but I was looking for the Porter cable pocket hole jig, which did a very similar thing where it would rotate 90 degrees and the build quality was apparently fantastic on it. So anyways, um, yeah, this is kind of that use case. So Let's fast forward and uh, I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so we have the carcass for the lower of this cabinet all done. Very happy with the process, came together very quickly. Um, pocket holes went in well. As you saw, cutting those pocket holes or drilling those pocket holes earlier, they came up very clean. Um, being able to, to move the piece along here and get the support needed was great. 
Um, for me, the 720 Pro, which does include the accessories here, the 720, I believe, is pretty much just the jig and then the accessories that come on the back. Um, the 720 Pro is worth it for my use case with cabinetry. And I think for a couple of reasons. So both the extension wings make it really easy to use in this orientation. I don't typically use them when doing wide pieces this way, although I think that there are some times where I would if I was doing pocket holes along the long end of a very long piece. Um, I do like the taller support versus the K5 that I have. And again, check out that video where I did a more detailed comparison to the K5 if you're interested. The auto depth, um on here is great I, I i'm very happy with it uh, i did in another video highlight a little bit of a concern with a little bit of spacing when using thicker material on here so when using like two by material or some hardwoods doesn't cause any concern for me when it comes to cabinetry and working with plywood if i was doing fine furniture making i'd probably be a little concerned although i probably wouldn't be using pocket holes for that um build quality is pretty good not as good as the K5 or K4, so a bit of a step down there, which is a little disappointing, but so far for me, using this on, I think, six projects, so this would be the, the sixth one, it's held up really well, and I haven't dropped it on the floor. I don't know how it would survive with that. I'm not gonna test that, um, but yeah, held up really well. And also for me, somebody that makes a little bit of money on the side doing some custom cabinetry work, closets, built-ins, that sort of thing. This is more than paid for itself already. So yeah, it, it's a recommend for me, but with a few caveats, the pro with these accessories is really only if you're gonna be using a lot of the 90 degree rotation or you want these repeatable stops, which I don't think you would need to worry too much about. The clamp is fine. Uh, if you are going to clamp it to your workbench or want to clamp it to a board that you're going to then mount to your workbench or something along those lines. Uh, also take a look at the 520 and I think maybe 520 Pro, I can't remember exactly what the, those are. But the, the pistol grip doesn't have that built-in dust collection, whereas this is phenomenal with dust collection. But I think that if you weren't going for the 720 Pro, take a look at the used market in your area and look if you can pick up a K4 and potentially upgrade the clamp. Um, Richard over at Woodworking Garage has done a plethora of videos on that jig and how you can upgrade it with some aftermarket accessories. So I'll, I'll link to one of his videos or his channel either above or below. And um, the K5 that, that I have, um, I'll, I'll be doing something with it, but it's a great jig. Definitely check it out. But yeah, for me, the 720 Pro is a recommend not just based on what's in this video, but based on what I showed in some of the other videos as well. So thanks for watching and uh, see you in another video soon.